Hello, my name is Jo Healy. I am the PSHE coordinator at Pebblebrook, and I just thought I'd have a little chat with you about relationships and sex education. It's a subject that understandably uh, parents and carers do get a bit worried about what we're teaching them. So the first thing to say is that by the time your child gets into key stage four and five, obviously they will have gone through earlier aspects of our sex education programme. Um, and we do that within the context of respectful relationships, family relationships, strong friendships. Okay, so we're the whole time we're talking about positive, healthy, safe relationships. Um, and so that the students do feel safe and they're really clear about boundaries in class, um, we have ground rules. Now these ground rules are used in all PSHE lessons and they are re-established with the students um, in the first few lessons every half term when we first start a new topic and um, we refer to them quite a lot. If, if we feel that a student has stepped outside those ground rules, you know, they are then clear what they've done that's outside of those ground rules and that will be addressed. So here they are. So in Key Stage 4 and 5, our school rules are very much around rights and responsibilities because they're heading to adulthood. So I'll just go through these with you. Everybody has the right to feel listened to. Everyone has the right to join in and have their say if they want to. Um, this doesn't mean that your students are allowed to opt out of answering questions and things. Uh, the teachers will direct questions at students that they think that they can manage and cope with. We're also really aware of which students are more likely to be embarrassed and obviously we're not going to put them on the spot in that situation. Um, we all have the responsibility to make sure that people do not feel judged or put down. We have the responsibility to use the correct words so that offence is not caused. Um, everybody has the responsibility to keep confidentiality and this is, you know, this is very clearly explained to the students. This is not because it's private, dirty, something that you can't talk about. This is in terms of people's privacy, that we don't want people to feel embarrassed. We do not expect students to be teasing each other about what's been talked about in class. Uh, the final one, um, that everybody has the responsibility to make sure that they know or ask where to get further help and advice if they need it. Uh, and one of the things that's really important in our lessons is that we always talk about where you, who the adults are that you can go to for help and advice. That if you feel like you can't speak to one of those adults for some reason, that there are websites that you can look at and there are phone numbers that can be called and those are displayed in class and given out to the students. Um, the other thing we do, we do proactively encourage our students to ask questions. You know, we need to know the questions that they want answered so that we can make sure that, that we are doing what they need to be taught. Um, we do this in a variety of ways. So always in the first lesson, there are post-it notes on their desks. They're all asked to write one or two questions down about something that they would like to learn about or know the answer to. Maybe it's a myth, maybe it's something they've heard, you know, on YouTube or somewhere like that. It's myth, is this correct? So they will write those down on a post-it note. They will be collected in, they don't put their names on them. And then we go through and answer those questions gradually as the weeks go on. Um, another way that they're encouraged to ask questions is obviously in class, in group chats, but also, you know, they can ask stu um, other students, they can ask the st staff in class, there's always at least two staff in class, as they are working, we can go around and have private chats. Um, they're also encouraged to ask adults around school, all the adults are, are very well trained in addressing the needs of our students and answering their questions. And they will be honest, if they don't know the answer, they will say to the student, I need to check that out, I'll come back to you. The final way that students are encouraged to ask questions is if they feel embarrassed to talk to somebody about it, is that they can write a question in their book and a simple to the point answer will be written back to them so that they can have that addressed. So, what do we actually teach your children? Let's find out. I'm going to talk about the Key Stage 4 programme first and then I will talk about the FED programme, the Key Stage 5 programme. So for the Key Stage 4s, obviously they've already been through, most of them have been through three years of relationships and sex education at Pebblebrook. Um, we start off, we go in and we are talking about relationship values. We look at what is important in a relationship, we talk about respect, we do things like continuums, 
where they will say uh, what they what they think, whether it's a yes, no, maybe to a statement. Um, we look at different situations. How would you respond to this situation? Um, we then look at romantic relationships. A lot of our students by key stage four may be thinking about starting a relation, uh, relationship with somebody else. We know that a lot of our students will not be doing that and we're always very mindful of that too. Um, so we look at you know, how you go about asking somebody on a date, what expectations are within a relationship. And then we, we also look at when you feel that a relationship has come to an end, how that relationship can be ended respectfully so that the other person's feelings are strongly taken into account with as little harm as possible. We uh, focus a lot on respect and consent. And obviously there are very strong laws in this country about consent and the need for permission. Um, and the need to be able to protect yourself. So we spend a lot of time discussing scenarios, statements, questions, looking at film clips about what consent actually is and that a yes is consent, a firm yes is consent, a maybe is not consent, a no is definitely not consent and it is not, not okay to try and persuade somebody, no means no. Uh, we then move on to looking at contraception and we spend a couple of weeks on this because we look at the range of contraception that is available um, because obviously they, you know, they, they've they seen things on TV, they might have watched things on YouTube, they'll see adverts up on public transport, that sort of thing. Um, and then we look at what is more appropriate for younger adults and we spend at least a lesson looking at condoms, looking at condoms packets to see how you check that it's a safe condom to use, that it's in date. Um, and we do actually get them to have a go at putting a condom on a condom demonstrator. We don't want the first time our students meet a condom to be the time that it needs to be used. So sometimes we get a bit silly with it because it, it, it takes away the awkwardness. Um, and the expectation is that by the end of the session, they will all have had a go at putting a condom on a condom demonstrator. And if they didn't wish to do that, that they're very clear about how the condom is used. Finally, we look at sexual orientation and gender. Um, and again, we have a lot of scenarios where we look at um, different peoples, different gender identities, different sexual orientations. It's done in a very respectful way. Um, we look at young people talking about their gender identity their sexual orientation and how that is from their perspective. Okay, so that's the Key Stage 4 programme. Um, if you want to know anything else about that, please do contact our office. Always happy to talk to you, either in person, by phone, by email, whatever works for you, but do, do let the office know. Okay, so now I'm going to move on, I'm going to talk about the Key Stage 5 programme. So the Key Stage 5 programme for our Fed students, um, moves on from the Key Stage 4 programme. It reinforces some aspects of it and then moves on and develops it a little bit. So uh, we start off, and again, we're looking at romantic relationships. You know, often the students are two years older. Um, they're starting to consider romantic relationships. And again, we're looking at what expectations are in a romantic relationship. We're looking at res mutual respect and we're looking at consent in romantic relationships. We also, for our students, a lot of them have got social difficulties uh, and can feel slightly awkward, as can mainstream teenagers, look at how you would ask somebody out. We then also consider when a relationship has come to an end, how you can effectively end that relationship, maintaining respect for the other person. Uh, we then um, move on to, again, the condoms. Uh, very, very important uh, for young adults to make sure that if, if they choose to be sexually active and they have a number of partners, that um, they are protecting themselves from sexually transmitted infection and pregnancy. So again, as we would have done in Key Stage 4, we have a practice and a bit of a play with the condoms to make sure that the students are safe in their approach to using them and that they know how to check out the packets to make sure that they've got a kite mark on to make sure that they are made to a certain standard and that they are in date. Um, we then move into looking at preventing sexually transmitted infections. Obviously condoms, super important for this. Um, 
and we talk about how important it is to go to a clinic if you have multi-partners to get yourself checked out and make sure that you haven't inadvertently got a sexually transmitted infection. Wherever possible, we take them to a local clinic where they can get advice, where students can be given free condoms uh, once they've left school and they've got a, a card to enable them to do that. So that if they do need to go there for any reason, they have been there once before. Obviously, there is also a clinic in High Wycombe as well as Aylesbury that we can't go to. We look at that, we find out where it is, um, and we talk about the processes would be very similar. Um, another thing that we do, super, super important, is look at the aspect of permission and consent. And again, for our students to have it reinforced that they understand that the only yes is a strong yes that it is not fair or safe to coerce people or to try and persuade people to do things that they don't want to do and that a maybe is not a yes, it's a no. And that a no is obviously, means that they shouldn't be tried to be persuaded. Okay, then moving on, uh, really importantly, we, look at, we start looking at parenting. A lot of our students are a bit sparkly eyed about parenthood. Uh, so we go on to look at the responsibilities of parenthood um, how people would know that they're ready for that, um, your living circumstances to be ready for parenthood, uh, what's involved with rearing a baby and a, a young child and how, what a massive responsibility that is for those of us that are parents. Um, then the final aspect of this year's Key Stage 5 programme is looking at unplanned pregnancy, what the options are, what the decisions are that, that need to be made, um, what needs to be taken in account around any decisions that are made and the ways forward um, to have as positive an outcome for the family and that young person as possible. So if you have any concerns about any of that, if you've got any questions that you would like to ask me, please call the office. I can either phone you back or if you wish to email me, they can give you my email address. Uh, you know that you're always very welcome at Pebblebrook. Thank you for listening.